this thing that you look at your bank account and you go, this is how much money I have. The problem is you call this your bank account, but you're going to lose this money one day and other people's money is going to go into this bank account. So this isn't your bank account. Everyone's bank account is your bank account. You just might not have done the creative thing to cause them to give you the response to the value that you're creating. Why don't we start out by connecting to what really is, in my opinion, the most important thing to connect to, which is this moment right here. And it's a very cliche, Erica says, hi, gorgeous. So now I'm a little blushy, but that feels good. Thank you. Hi, Erica. She's like, no, I'm talking to the dude above me on the comments. Um, so uh, I'm happy to be with you guys. So the first thing I do is I have to connect to this moment, this moment right here. It's a very cliche and kind of a nothing sentence, but also at the same time, it's the most important thing in the world. So there's a space that we all are connected to right now. And that space, I believe, has the answer to every question you've ever had. It has new possibilities in it. It has growth. It has freedom. It wants to remove all the old stories away from you. It wants to heal you. It is a natural state. So some of the people that are on this call are on the Wednesday night calls because we have this thing called the Absolutely Everything Pass. And the Absolutely Everything Pass is one, it's all of our content that's archived forever. It's awesome. But every Wednesday night I do a call like this and we renew ourselves with these calls. We have new revelations. We have this community. It's awesome. So it's an interesting thing to do it with this many people tonight and just feel into it for a second. And then I notice these feelings come up and what's my job? What's my job when I feel it is to connect to the moment. Because even though this is a giant amount of amazing people, this moment right here is even bigger. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and I don't mean it's better than you. I just mean when you get nervous about your job interview, when you get nervous about you know what you're going to do uh, you know, on a date, what you're going to do in your life, the first thing we have to do is connect to the now. So I often do two to eight hours a day now of listening to silence. And I've discovered that it has much better ideas for me than I can ever come up with, that this space has better ideas, that this space is magical. So to give you an example, we've been um, getting ready for an event in Seattle and doing what we can to fill it using a lot of effort. Dan meditated the other day, came up with an idea, and suddenly 3,000 people went to the East West book page based on Dan's idea. Why? Why did they go? Because the idea was higher level. The idea was a higher level idea than what the ego that we hold on to believes we're capable of, right? So the ego thinks that we're capable of the story that we've been so far, but the moment understands that there's bigger for you. Now, Zan Hall says, eight hours of meditation a day? Now, I have a question. Just check this out. We're willing to give eight hours a day to a job, sometimes a job we don't like. We're willing to give eight hours a day if we know for sure that we'll get, you know, whatever, $20 to $40 an hour, we'll happily hand eight hours a day. Now, if you gave eight hours a day to your soul, do we think that we're not going to come up with things, have higher alignment? things that are going to be worth more than 20 to $40 an hour. Not only that, but your connection is going to be to your soul. So you won't need to spend it on such addictive things anymore. You'll have higher level ideas. You'll, you'll clear out the things that no longer matter to you. Do you think doing eight hours a day, and I'm not sitting here saying so everyone should, but it's funny what a given it is that we will hand eight hours a day to someone that doesn't align with our soul and we will ignore our soul while we do it. Yet, what would eight hours a day in your soul do? As I just said, Dan meditated an hour and suddenly came up with an idea that suddenly had 3,000 people want to come to our event, right? It was just a way that he made a change in the edit of a video. I don't quite even know the whole thing, but that's kind of our way of working. Our team's way of working is asking where we are putting too much effort when things aren't moving the way that we want them to. 
Can you check that out? In other words, <clears throat> oh, this thing isn't happening. Maybe we're trying too hard. <clears throat> we have almost the opposite of every motivational thing ever. We, we really understand that the universe truly wants to change the planet through us. I want you to know that the universe wants to create major change through you, but you have to be receptive to the ideas of the universe. So sometimes when you listen and you meditate, you might feel anxiety, you might feel stress. You know why? Because the first thing the universe is doing is removing what you're not out of you. So when you're meditating, it's really hard. Yeah, that's because this meditation is the start of the death of your limitation that you're addicted to. The meditation you're doing, you're just listening to science, the first thing the mind's going, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? Because the mind is the smaller story and the mind believes life isn't this easy. Life doesn't mean I can feel this deeply. Life, life is not this simple, there's no way it could be this easy. So it fights to make it harder. It actually goes, if it was that easy, that would be death to me. So I'm angry about it and I'm going to do what I can to prove that it's not that easy. And the old me had to work my butt off to get approval from my dad. The old me, if I didn't work hard, then I'd be abandoned by my parents, whatever it is. It has these little stories. So we're scared of just receiving. And, and what if instead of it being about effort, it being much more about listening? Now this week I've been talking a lot about the difference between receiving and chasing. And one difference that came up today where Dan Carey and I were doing our Calego exercise, someone just said, Sherry just said, I feel guilty if it's that easy. Isn't that amazing? You feel guilty. So if someone just offers you a million dollars, some people might get excited. Some people might freak out. Some people feel guilty. Like I don't deserve this. I deserve less money, right? I deserve less abundance. So what we were talking about today is, what was it? The difference between receiving and chasing. Receiving is when you pay attention to what you have. And when you pay attention to what you have, which right now could be this moment, could be the air here, could be the silence, could be the fact that we can talk on a computer. It could be the fact that you have a heart beating and that heart doesn't care about any of your past story. It could be all of these things. What do you have? That's the difference between receiving. Chasing is when you focus on what you don't have and you put the vibration of don't have over and over and over again. You could even chase things that you don't have, but think of it as you have it. That would be different. Like if you started saying, thank you for whatever, this abundance, thank you for this moment, that's different. But when we're in a chasing vibration, we're really going, I'm incomplete unless I have this. Now take out unless I have this. I'm incomplete. And the universe is like, you got it. Let's make more incompleteness. Let's find ways to keep this story going of how hard life is right? So if you start with receiving and you receive what you have, like, it's so funny. This week, my book comes out. It comes out in two days. And apparently, if you go to some stores, they're just letting you have it at independent bookstores and everything. So this is just the proof of the book. This is just the, the rough copy, right? And I have this book coming out. So of course, the ego in us is like, is this going to be a New York Times bestseller, right? Because we're under the illusion sometimes that having a New York Times bestseller is better than the fact that there's a plant here, right? So we sit here and actually focus on, we got to get a New York Times bestseller. And the more we think we want to get it, the more we're saying we don't have it. And the more we say we don't have it, we notice that the sales drop. And then when I do something really bizarre, like stare at the plant and get thankful that there's a plant here, or stare at the fact that there's a paint job on the wall, and I focus on the paint and go, thank you for the fact that someone painted on this wall, there's paint here. You start the practice of focusing on what you do have, and you'll notice this almost painful thing to the ego. The amount of things you have is endless, because it's not just I have the bank account or the car or whatever, it's I have the ability to breathe. I have the internet. I have a heart that's just beating. And again, that heart beating I can focus on and it has no feelings of lack or believing that you're your old story, whatever. 
It doesn't care about what other people said about you. It doesn't care about what happened yesterday. It doesn't care about how much is in your bank account. You are here to connect to it. So you start to go, wow, I have just that. And then you start getting excited about that. And when we sit in a room, usually one of the reasons we stress is we focus on everything that's going on outside of the room. So for two hours, you could sit, watch the news, go on Facebook, do what you need to do to be paying attention to what's going on outside of the room. But just so you know, everything going on inside the room is just as important. If you spend eight hours just noticing what's in the room or two hours or three hours or one hour, ah, uh, you will discover that it's just as important and it will take you past just the surface story, right? You go, wow, there's pain here. Uh, and then you start staring at it. And then you start thinking about the atoms in the paint. And then you start feeling your heart beating. And then you start feeling the energy that's in that. And you start breathing in and breathing out, right? And you start being here and you realize, God, we have, we have YouTube. You have all training in the world available to you. Uh, you have the ability to breathe. You have this moment. And you have incredible ideas. And you have things that you no longer need in your life able to be removed. You have the ability to remove old stories from your life just by connecting to your heart. Now, this sounds corny, but I'm telling you, I had, a, I had dinner with Matt Kahn last night and we talked for two hours about this. And I'm not trying to name drop here, but Matt Kahn got to have dinner with me. Um, and uh, no, what we said was we have this real big belief that right now, one of the things that is trying to happen in the world is that the old third dimension of forced effort, ego, and only believing the way life presented itself is the truth, just that what the news says is fact, it's eliminating that from the world, right? It's actually releasing that. It's doing what it can to make that obsolete. So it's it's making our circumstances seem not as good. And because we can't have the comfort of knowing what our future is gonna be quite as well, it's because we don't have the comfort of knowing, you know, our old story is safe, right? We have to surrender a little bit more. And when you are actually surrendering, there's going to be some deep pain. There's going to be some releasing. There's going to be a lot of crying. Why though? Because we're gonna learn how to move from a place in our body versus just have no connection to ourselves and do everything we can to change the things outside. So how does that apply to what this book is about? The illusion of money and also the new documentary that comes with the book. Just so you guys know, if you haven't gotten the book, please get it. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's on Amazon. And if you go to, I believe it's kylecease.com illusion. If you get it, you can literally put the number into this thing and get our new movie that is so awesome. Dan and Carrie made a movie. We all made a movie, but Dan and Carrie ended up editing the thing and producing it. Now, Lindsay put the link in there. Lindsay on the team is so fast, but you can have the movie tonight. It's crazy. It's world changing. And I can say that because I didn't totally make the movie, they did, and I can now go looking at them. They made, with no experience on making a movie, one of my favorite movies I've ever seen, and I don't mean it because I'm in it. I mean, it really is here to affect your heart, create change, and it's awesome. So if you get the book, you can get that for free. You can also just get the movie directly for you name the price and the money that comes in that's profit will be going to charity. So we're here to do what we can to create massive change. And I want you to know the book is totally different than the movie. The movie is based on the book, but the book is much more specific. It's much more how to actually do the actual tangible things. There's an exercise at the end of each chapter. It's awesome. So the reason I bring all of this stuff up is because I believe that we're moving to a time where what will create abundance is you connecting to yourself. I've seen too much evidence of it. That value has been based on how much money someone says some they have, right? You know, people always say, oh, that person's worth blah, 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 blah. 
and you hear that, that person's worth, that means that's how much cash they have, that's how much money they have, assets they have. That's nice. But there's some people who could have $40 million and lose it and suddenly have nothing. And then there's people that could have $40 million and lose it and get it right back. Like if someone took, I've talked about this before, but if someone took Tina Turner's money out of her bank account, she could go on tour and in a month probably refill it. So isn't that interesting? Are they both worth the same amount? This person inherited the money but never developed a connection to themselves, their skills, their talents, their creativity, their joy. And this person developed it internally. So if the money leaves, they still have value. So one of the things that this book is here to do is help you redefine what value is. Because to me, value has nothing to do with how much money you have. Remember, Every dollar you've ever made came from you. Every person you've ever got to go on a date with came from you. They were interested in you. So one of the big mistakes we make is we get excited about the thing versus us. You're the source of every dollar you've ever made. You're the source of everything you've ever done. And does that mean it's you or is it what you're connecting to? Because I can listen to silence for a while and I'll get a faster, better, higher level idea, or I'll get permission to let go of something that no longer aligns with me. So if we went for a walk, and I think I said this on Lewis House's podcast, but if we went for a walk and I rounded a corner and I found a waterfall, we're in the woods and I don't tell you about the waterfall, and I come back with a cup of water, wouldn't it be weird if I was like, look, a cup of water. I'm not showing you the waterfall. I'm not showing you the most important thing there is to show you. And that's what we are doing. We're doing what we can to focus on the thing versus the source of the thing. So there's the source of what you are, and then there's the source of what, what creates that. And then you start to go, wow, I'm not even doing this work. I'm not even doing this work. Now, you guys are all amazing, open-hearted people. I know that, I can read your stuff. You would not be on the call this long if you didn't have a major, empathetic, giant, open heart. And you probably know what it's like when you can be there and hold space for someone and they don't let you. Do you know what I mean by that? When you, when you can be there for someone, you can see that you can show them something they can't see, right? You can hold space for them and they're almost resisting your help and almost maybe looking for something that might feel more of a struggle, more, more, it's gotta be harder than this. So you know what that feels like for you. Now imagine if the universe feels the same way. Imagine if the universe is like, I'm here for you when you're ready, but you gotta show me you're ready. You can't just say universe all day and then sort through problems all day online. You can't say universe all day and then do what you can to stay in your old story where you're not receptive to universe this moment help, right? So you can feel right now, you could receive the universe, you could just take a deep breath in and know that at the moment, 1,886 people are on, which is crazy, taking a deep breath in with you and take in the idea that one person can shift the entire planet. And if one person can shift the entire planet, what could we do? We don't have to be followers and students. We can be co-creators. We are all even in this. And right now the number on here is skyrocketing. There is an easy tipping point based on the consciousness that we decide to receive. So it's not just higher, it's also deeper and wider. I wanna offer you to widen your consciousness here so that we're not like chasing a high vibration, which is an egoic thing that actually keeps us in a comparative low vibration in order to see it as higher. Do you get what I mean by that? It was kind of a deep thing, but I think you get what I mean. I wanna to talk to you about widening your connection to the moment, right? Widening it. So check this out. I would rather have an hour left of my life deeply connected more than a long life shallow connected, okay? Life is, it's been taught to us to measure life based on how long we can live it. And because of that, there are a lot of people doing what they can, strategize, protect, get locks on the doors, do everything you can to worry because we gotta live. So there's a lot of people worrying about things that are gonna happen next year. 
And I thought to myself, why are you worried about that? Why do you even want to stay alive next year so you can worry about the year after? In other words, your thing is worrying. So you're going to spend this entire year worrying and get to next year. And let's say it doesn't happen. Okay, good. We can stay alive. And I can worry about this year. <laughs> I can worry about this year so that I can worry about next year, right? And I see a lot of people that are always worrying and doing what they can to protect a life that they're not living. And the more you're not living it, the more you're putting out, this life isn't that valuable, right? So it's an interesting thing because we do what we can to save the nature in the trees, but we rarely go live in the trees. We spend our days at the malls and Starbucks. So the moves we make tell the world, right? That this is where it's important based on what we do right? What if you knew that the forest and the cabins in the forest had value? Because a lot of times we make decisions based on not connecting and not having value and based on saving money, which basically is a scream to the universe that money is more important than my soul. It is. That's a triggering sentence, but it doesn't make it not true. When we make these decisions and say, yeah, but I can't afford it, you're actually asking for more of that. And you don't know what happens if you sacrifice the need for the guarantee of money for your soul. Now, sometimes our 10 vibration will include bringing in money directly too. But this is really, really, really big, right? To understand that we've lived in a world where I have so many people that say to me, Kyle, I work my ass off. I'm trying as hard as I can. I work my ass off all the time and I can barely make ends meet. And I thought, what if the problem is that you're working so hard? Like, what if the problem is that you're all effort while totally depleted? What if the problem is that your old story is doing all the work and not a higher vibration? What if actually the part of you that's working needs to be totally cried out of you and we need to see what present moment can do? What if instead of hard work, we vibration work? What if instead of staying in the past childhood story that's working your ass off so that you don't get abandoned by a parent or so that you, you unconsciously have this feeling that your dad will be proud of you, you instead delete and remove with love the old story and you end up here. Can you take that in? What would happen? And you will hear me say that. And when I say that, notice the part of you that goes, it's not that easy. He doesn't know my story. Easy for him to say. You get what I'm saying? And if you feel that way, if you feel, it's, I don't know why it's freezing, hit refresh. It shouldn't. So, hmm. So it says it's frozen. So, okay. So this is supposed to be happening, right? So we hold space for that for a second and it says it's back, right? I believe that that freezing moment, because a bunch of people said it's frozen, was a moment for me to connect to source again, right? So that's how you start to go, what does this outside thing mean I'm supposed to connect to? Because life is a mirror of you. And if you think life is off, life sucks, it's not making things happen, right? Then you are getting feedback. It's a mirror of you. There's so many people on here right now, 1,934 people right now. <sighs> so yeah, we're here right now. And the first thing I want to do is offer you <sighs> to connect to the beating of your heart. And know that that beating of your heart is beating my heart. It's the same thing. And we'll talk about this in the movie. If you haven't seen the movie yet, please check it out. But I talk about this deeply. Someone said, what about people that think that's narcissistic? What about it? Those people only exist in your mind, right? There's them. And what if someone told Michael Jackson in 1980 that for him to make the Thriller album would be narcissistic. That's their projection. What if someone told Michael Jordan, don't play basketball, it's narcissistic for you to think that. Oprah, you're narcissistic. There's a difference between narcissism and following your soul. 
I'll tell you what narcissism is. Narcissism is when you're scared of your own triggers and you expect the world to mold around your own darkness that you won't look at. Your soul is only looking at your triggers, your, your darkness, and it's loving it. And when it brings love to it, it has a next calling that's higher, that's more, right? So narcissism is when you're scared of your own darkness and you are so scared of it, you're blocked from it and you're doing everything you can to make everyone else mold around your ego. It's not very fun. It's not very growthful. It's not very helpful. We all have a little bit of narcissism. We all have a little bit of empathy, you know, over empathy. Some people are more than others empathetic. But the more you do the work, the more you're here and the quieter that the over empathetic pain and the over narcissistic part of you get. The more when I, when I listen to silence, right, the more the parts of me that need to be seen in all areas of my life get seen. You know, the number one thing that every person wants is to be seen. And what is going to make us change on this planet? What's going to shift us on this planet is when we start to learn how to see ourselves, right? So the number one thing we all want is to be seen but we will shift when we see ourselves. So if you right now, let's do an exercise. If you right now took a deep breath in. <sighs> so Sam just said, I'm so over ego. And I wanna offer Sam to not be, because only ego would say that. So what I wanna offer you, Sam, is to accept ego, because the number one thing that ego needs is to be seen, and loved and respected by you. Do you get what I'm saying? This, this, the ego needs to know it's okay to exist in your body. That's all the ego needs. The ego needs to be loved. The ego needs to be accepted. The ego needs to, he to be heard. That's a childhood story that feels totally unheard. So, on a, so, so it's just a quick thing on that, that, that only ego says, I'm going to get rid of ego because it's a job for the ego. What if there's nothing to do and we hold space and a love that's even bigger for the ego and the moment? <sighs> so take a deep breath and we'll do a quick meditation, just a quick few minute meditation, <clears throat> just to even notice the spaces of awareness raising, right? The old paradigm taught us to think positive. And by thinking positive, we imply there's a negative. And in today's paradigm, in the 2019 paradigm, I wanna offer you to love everything that comes up, right? To not just think positive in a way to avoid the negative, but what I really believe is what we're here to do now is also accept the things that we perceive are our darkness and know that the only thing that makes the things that we perceive as darkness, darkness is our judgment of it, is our belief that it shouldn't be there. Now, when we connect to the moment, we discover that this moment can hold space for a lot. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, both good and bad. And if that can happen in this space, that means it can hold space for everything you have in you. And if we listen to the space and we surrender to the space, our darkness, our fears, Thank you, Reggie. I, I like what you said. I liking, I'm liking what you're saying. I'm, I'm liking what you're hearing. That's actually still complimenting me, but thank you. But you're me, so you're saying it. So good work. But thank you so much for listening. So if you take a deep breath right now, you'll notice that this space starts off maybe showing you your darkness. If you listen to silence for just a few minutes, take a deep breath and listen as all of the thoughts show up, right? Just listen, maybe it's uh, what do I do about this? Or he doesn't know my story, or I gotta figure this out, or I don't know how to meditate. Let them be there and here's a dare for you. Don't answer those questions. Let the questions that are deep in your chest and your stomach show up, but don't answer them. Don't answer them, let them show up and don't answer them. Let, let questions be there because that's an inner child with questions, deep pain, but the mind answers them. So let's let them be there. Just 
Just take a minute and just breathe in. And let the question be there. Let the fear be there. And connect more to this space that's right here. And receive this space that's here. Don't chase the space, receive it, it's already here. And receive the darkness that's coming up. Remember, if it's coming up, it's coming out. Anything that comes up is coming out. Don't figure it out. Don't try to answer it. So Sherry says it's crying and screaming. So I want to dare you, Sherry, to let it. Let the voice cry and scream while you stay a safe space. That doesn't mean you have to cry and scream. And you might, you might cry. But if you can be present, like you are right here going to finally be the parent for the childhood you that has been unseen completely because you've been chasing a, a, a approval from outside, but outside can't see you as well as you can see you. Jeb says, why the hell am I crying? Don't even, don't even answer that question. Just let yourself cry. You're crying because that was buried inside of you. All the stuff you're crying out that was buried inside of you. That's lodged in your stomach. Something is crying. Sad my dog is getting closer to passing. So much love to you, Aaron. So much love to all of you for doing the heroic work. Yeah, Brooke says, Brooke on our team, who's one of my best friends and amazing. I'm so fascinated by how some people hear this and love it, and other people say it's too hard. I just want to offer you, nothing's hard. You're sitting. It might be painful, but it's not hard. Hard's a word we use to give ourselves the excuse to get out of it. It's painful sometimes. But on the other side of pain is magic. So let's let pain be there. My whole week has been totally nut synchronistic. In fact, I'd love to tell you about it in a minute. <sighs> Hold space for the release. The universe is forcing us to release our past in 2019. The universe is removing our past story for us. Now, if you think you're a past story, you're gonna go down with it. But if you get your this moment, it's going to pull it right out of your chest. And that's what crying can be. So breathe into this moment right now. Ah, let yourself feel whatever you're feeling. Ah. Hmm. Feeling and I'm reading just what's coming up and let it come up. Remember, if it's coming up, it's coming out. So we don't even have to figure out what it means. Remember, I've said this before, but if you go to a dentist and they pull your old cavity, that's like this old, you know, metal filling out, you're going to see it. It's on its way out because it's leaving. But it'd be weird if you're like, what does this mean? I'm trying to figure out, is it because I'm a fourth moon Sagittarius that this is, no, just let it come out. It's already on its way out. Everything that comes up is on its way out. So you just sit there and be a space as it comes out. It's okay if you're not crying. That's not forced. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn says, what if I'm not crying? That's also okay. Isn't it funny? People that cry often think I shouldn't be crying. And then people that aren't crying are like, is it okay? One of the biggest problems we have is the belief we should be somewhere else. The belief that where we are isn't okay. I work with people that find their problem. And they think I'm not like everyone else. I got this problem. And then I help them. I had one client who said, I have no problems. I feel bad. I, have, I feel bad. I have no problem. Wherever you are is perfect. We're over 2,000 people on this call right now, you guys. Breathe deep into your stomach right now and know you're that supported. Imagine 2,000 people here. That's how easy this is. We were tempted to do this event at the Alex Theater. And then we were like, life wants us to do it in an easier way. So let's do it online. And I can do it in my house. Do you hear how life is like, it's not that much effort. So maybe a reason things aren't working in any way, if you feel any part of you that says it's not working, maybe that's a sign you're using too much effort. There's something in your life you can let go of. There might be too many middlemen. You might have too many, like <clears throat> too many cooks in the kitchen. You might be forcing too many things. Taking the idea right now 
are you doing the event? Yeah. Uh, oh, are we doing the event live? Well, this week I have Seattle and then I'm doing Lewis Howes' event in Ohio. But life is not wanting you to build bigger. It's It wants you to remove and it will build bigger. The more you remove everything that's in the way, the more you just let go, the more it can move you faster. So here's three examples that happened this week. On Tuesday, so I... Uh, don't live in Los Angeles anymore, but we do have a place there that we uh, edit and shoot podcasts and, and different things in Columbus, Ohio, Jennifer. And <clears throat> we realized that we don't need, um, oh, Lindsay's on it. There's the live events. If you want to see me in Seattle, Lewis House's event. And I'm also doing a quick thing in Portland with my friend, Michael Namkung, who's brilliant. So Dan and Carrie and I were talking and life just tells us, let go of what's in the way. And if I can see a mental reason why I should keep it, often that means I need to let go, a mental reason. In other words, you go to your mind once you get to the part of your heart that doesn't want it, right? And then your mind explains why you have it. So let's say you're thinking about quitting a job or, or selling your house and you feel like, should we keep the house? And your mind immediately kicks in and goes, well, we've lived here for 20 years right? Well, I want to quit the job, but I'm supposed to get a raise in three months. Okay. You are now ignoring your body and you're dropping your vibration to your mind. And we've done that for so many years that that's normal. Do you get what I'm saying? But once you're in your head explaining why you're keeping something in your life, you can already know vibrationally you don't want it. You already don't want it because everything you want in your life, you would never explain why you keep it. There's no part of me that says, you know, my daughter, who's two years old, Vivi, she gets good medical, so I think I'll keep her as my daughter. She's the highest vibration. She's the highest alignment. What I do for a living here, this call, there's no part of me saying why I should do it. I want to do this call. It's fun. I'm growing. I'm learning as I'm doing it, right? But if I was like, it'd be good to do because then we can build an audience, then my lower vibration would be doing the call. And you wouldn't have my heart talking. You'd have ego and you'd see right through it. You'd have fear and creation and manipulation. And no universe can work through that because I'm, <laughs> because I'm trying to do it because I want to get something versus let's go. I want to create change. I want to learn myself and everything. So we have this place in Venice that we decided, do we want to hold on to it? And, and we, it's, it's an expensive place. It's a gorgeous place. And I totally came up with a reason why we should keep it. I said, well, we wanted to produce and record a bunch of podcasts there. We actually already did. Oh my God, there's, there's another reason we should keep it, right? We've, we've recorded like 12 or 13 podcasts there. We've put all this money in there. Yep, we need to let go of it. I just said to Dan and Carrie, we don't want the place. We're coming up with reasons to keep it. We don't want it. So that Tuesday, I said, let's not renew the lease. Let's give our notice. We're out. Okay. The next morning, I'm in Seattle on the BJ Shea morning show. He's one of the number one radio shows. He had seen my movie and he'd seen my events before. The new movie that we have that comes with the book. After the radio show, BJ Shea takes me to breakfast and for two hours sells me on why he wants to give me my own nationwide either podcast or radio show. Okay. And they'll produce it. So we don't have to pay to produce our own podcast or radio show. That didn't happen. That BJ Shea's known me for years and years and years. And that did not happen until we removed the clutter of the old way of doing it. Got it? That didn't happen until we let go. Right? Uh, so the next thing, I'm wearing shorts. The next thing, this week, this one's a sad one because my dear, dear friend, the brilliant Sean Stevenson passed away this week. I don't know if you know Sean Stevenson, but he was just love. And um, do you guys know Sean Stevenson? Do you know who that is? He was an amazing speaker. And um, anyway, so he passed away this week due to an accident. And it broke my heart, of course. And I just want to, first of all, I don't know if I can send you this, but I'm going to attempt to send you or show you at least a quick video that Sean sent me maybe a week ago. Um, hold on one sec. 
it's worth it. Hold on. Just to show you how loving this guy was. This is a video from Sean. Kyle, my brother, just wanted to send out some love. Saw one of your sponsored ads on Facebook about the illusion of money or I think that's what it was called. Dude, you were just putting out some truth bombs these past two years that I've been paying attention to uh, your marketing. So proud of you. So happy for you. You look dialed in. You look like you got what you want and you're just getting more of it every day. So just want you to know I see you and I love you. He just sent me a message to say he loved me and he did that all the time. He didn't want anything from me. He didn't want to, um, he just wanted to tell me good job. And he gave me that like a week ago. It's almost like he knew he was leaving. It felt like I'm saying goodbye. And um, it was heartbreaking and it was a shock. And I've been crying out Sean all week. And one of our mutual friends, Ivy and I went out to dinner and talked about Sean and we just cried and cried and cried and cried and laughed and talked about so many other things. And then the waiter, I just said to Ivy, I said, doesn't that waiter look like a Josh? It was just a joke. I said, doesn't it look like a Josh? She said, yeah. So because of that, that was the only time I decided in my life that I would look at the receipt and see what his name is. And it was Sean. It was S-E-A-N Sean. And we just sat there and cried. Sean Stevenson, my friend that I just played that video. So he, the guy's name was Sean. So the only time in my life that I looked at a receipt and it was Sean. And then we just felt held like everything was okay. And he was saying hi. And um, it was amazing. And I love him. And he taught me a lot. He taught me how to just be love, especially when you're suffering and going through all your crap because Sean had a very painful life and has been through so much. So love to Sean and his family, his wife, Mindy, and so much other stuff. The next day, I'm at a coffee shop with my two-year-old daughter. She takes the sunglasses off of my shirt, puts them on, and starts swaying her head like this. And Stevie Wonder came on the radio that second. And this week I have, and the, the video I made yesterday or two days ago called um, Forcing uh, Magical Surrender. You'll have to watch it because the timing at the end is crazy. But my point in all of this is that life is getting to be a combination of pain, release, magic. Pain, buildup. It's, it's killing your old story. It's, it's doing what it can to remove everything you thought you were. It's doing what it can to delete your small story. It's doing what it can to release. Then you cry it out and then magic. That's what's going on right now. And what Matt Kahn said to me is, life is moving us into a forced fourth or fifth dimension. And he'll talk about that on his stuff too. But the world is about to be on a frequency that is more love-based than achievement-based. And the more you decide to not fight it and stay in the achievement world while the world moves to love first, the moment first, you will effortlessly have so much more created through you. But you won't be excited about the achievements as much as the process, as the actual painting process, as the actual being in and in the journey. So it can be easy sometimes when the book comes out for Dan and Carrie and I to come up with how we're going to, you know, do make it a, a New York Times bestseller. And we notice every time we do that, we get totally depressed and off. And life is saying to us now, let me do it. Stop trying, stop forcing. So when our questions now are like, how do we get, we aren't even allowed to say the word how almost anymore. Life is trying to do it through you. So if you're struggling to achieve what you want, if you're struggling to achieve a ton of money, if that's what you want, if you're struggling to achieve security or, or freedom, the reason is we are now in a time where abundance is in. And if you keep making the abundance outside, you're on the wrong planet. In the 80s, that was fine. In the 80s, it was fine to achieve with a lot of effort. In the 80s, the consciousness was so at a place where 
you could leave the victim mentality and move into this achiever mentality and make things happen and that's awesome. And now we have enough people that have achieved things and, and then became even depressed after that and discovered that when I get something, I'll be happy is a lie. So now the new 2019 paradigm shift that is happening is starting to love the now more than any result. Love the process, love the feelings, love the stuff that's coming out. And the next few years, I really believe, are not going to be achieving, but surrendering as the, the universe is going to do like a three-year surgery and remove your old stories. You're going to cry out the part of you that thought who you are is what your mom said. You're going to cry out the part of you that said, if I achieve this, I'll get love from my dad. You're going to cry out all these different stories. And then what will you be left with? What will be left when you do that? See, you've never seen what the universe does when you aren't carrying those stories. We've never seen what life wants to do when we're not in a place of carrying our old baggage. So if you're trying to figure out why life is getting harder and harder, it's because you're using 80s methodology in a 2019 time. It's like having a brand new iPhone and downloading Windows 95 into it. You have shitty old software. And the old software says, we got to do it this way, this way, effort, 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 right? No. Effort is making people fall. Surrender is the number one asset you have. Your connection to yourself is the number one asset you have. That's where your value is, not in the money. Think of any person that says to you, who I am is I got this Lamborghini. Who I am is this millionaire. Ugh, you don't care. So why are you making that your value? You in this moment is your value. It's the same as me in this moment. It's the same as Mr. Rogers in this moment. It's the same as Oprah. All the same potential from, Dottie says, how do you stop repeating the crying? Well, you go to the bathroom every day. Why can't you cry every day? Why do we need to stop it? You have, you pick up shit from the world and then you gotta go to the bathroom, right? You pick up food and you gotta go to the bathroom, right? So in this time, we're going to be crying a ton. We're going to be letting go and crying so much. And then what's on the other side? Remember, when you cry out something, you now create a vortex and a space that the world and the universe has to fill. Now, if you stay on your old channel, you're going to fill it egoically really quickly with the same energy. Like, let's say you release a relationship that doesn't align for you, and then you fill it the next day with the exact same type of person. Okay, you could have filled it with the moment. Fill it with the universe. Stay there. Let yourself cry out the type of person you were that got that type of person in your life. Release that. you got to be releasing that. This is you going up the channels. This is you going up vibrationally. You suddenly make yourself receptive. You cry out the things that no longer serve you. And then you make yourself receptive on a higher channel. That's what we're here to do. And that you is more invincible. That you is, is going to get sick lesser. It is because you're not keeping the stagnant story that fights itself all day. That you can receive so one thing, as the title in this book is, is we're going to learn to stop chasing. Stop chasing. The ego chases. The ego chases. The soul receives. It receives in this moment. I got to say, I put that out this week, and Matt Kahn put out the same thing, same time. We've discovered so many times, no one's copying each other. We just actually keep channeling the same stuff. We were talking about that yesterday. Like, it's like we're in this place where we're in the same meditative states and we have different ways of phrasing it. But like, it's crazy how many things Matt Kahn and I have discovered we have in common. Like, I'll say this thing and then he'll say, I just have said the same thing. So I want to offer you to practice receiving. And remember we, what I said at the beginning, you can only receive right now. You cannot receive anything in the future because there is no future. So when you chase, you go into the future, which doesn't exist. So basically what that means is you leave you. You leave your connection to you. You actually, when you chase, you disconnect yourself from the connection of what you are. 
So instead, let's receive right now. So take a deep breath again. <sighs> Rebecca Morton, Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N. Check him out on YouTube. Breathe in again. And I want to offer you to receive right here again. Receive again. Now receive your darkness. I want to dare you to hold space for not only receiving this moment, but also receiving your darkness. Can you hold space and just be there for your darkness? Receive. And if you need help, pay attention to the thing that's beating your heart, the energy around your heart. And let it just love you. Let it just be there. Let it be the thing you connect to before Facebook or Instagram. Just connect to the thing that's beating your heart. It's the same thing that's beating my heart. Crystal says, what if you are more comfortable with your darkness than your light? That actually usually means that that means you're not comfortable with your darkness because that's a lash out, right? And then you're actually making your light your darkness. If you're more comfortable with your darkness than your light, you're just making your light your darkness. So it's still darkness. Darkness is only what you resist. So I want you to allow whatever's coming up, whether it's you perceived it as your light or your darkness, let it come up, let it be there. So someone said, please explain your meaning of receiving darkness. Let it be there right now. Look at it, befriend it, don't fix it, don't get rid of it, don't chase it, don't figure it out. I just want every aspect of you to be there. So breathe in. It is okay to feel darkness, yes. So breathe in right here. And you might notice that there, there's a block to a certain part of your body. Some of you, it might be in your stomach, some of you, it might be in your chest. Does anyone feel a block in their body? And I wanna offer you to imagine that as a trap door, like the block opens up and what's under it can come up. Let every aspect of your body be there. And if you're going, I can't open it, let it be there closed then. We love it no matter what. So breathe deep into your body. It's in your throat, it's in your back, it's in your knees. Let it be there. Bring love to those areas and love to all of you, where it is and where it isn't. My heart just literally hurts. Now, I want you to want that. I want you to let it be there. Let it hurt. Let it hurt, like aim at it and go, you're allowed to hurt because it wants you to be seen. It wants you to see it. See, our pain is when we go, I got to get it to stop hurting. Now we're not listening to it. You are bigger than everything that hurts, right? So bring attention and love to where it's painful and actually allow yourself to, if you want, want more of it. Bring more light onto it. Yes, I'm for it. The, what keeps pain going is you running from it. So I love it. You are allowed to be there, all of me, all of me. And then you go, it's not working. What's working? You're trying to get rid of it? Let it be there. The only thing that's showing up is a sign that you're trying to get rid of it. And that means you're not surrendering to this moment. Oh, you are bigger than everything that hurts. There's no circumstance that is bigger than what you are. And this is a coat off one. You're this moment. So breathe deep into that. Breathe deep into that. Breathe deep into your stomach. Breathe deep into beyond your stomach. Breathe deep into your legs. And I want to offer you to bring in some mantras like thank you internally. You can breathe in the words thank you and breathe out the words thank you. And you're going to feel some pain come up possibly. You might feel some giddiness. You might feel some pain. Breathe thank you into it right now. Breathe thank you. Breathe out, thank you. Awesome, breathe in, thank you again. Breathe out, thank you. 
you'll also notice there's a part of you that's bigger than it. Imagine you've been sitting on the surface of the ocean and imagine the pain is two feet deep. Well, we're gonna go four feet deep. You get what I'm saying? That takes you beyond the pain. You're bigger than it. Your power is in this. So breathe in again. Love that your heart physically hurts, Josephine. Breathe out. Got some biceps going there, that's right. Body beast. Breathe in. Breathe out. Yes, this will help with the numbness. Want the numbness there. Every part that you're calling the thing that you gotta fix, want it there. Will this help with the numbness? I love the numbness. Will this help with my anger? I love the anger. Will this help with the block in my stomach? I love the block. You are allowed to be there. I love you. I am bigger than you and I will hold you because you're telling your inner child that wanted love from your parents when they couldn't give it to you that now you see the inner child and that it's priority. And you're bringing in the power of this universe to see it. Ah, breathe that in. Body beast, breathe that in right now and know that I do body beast and I get the smoothies afterwards. Breathe that in deep. That's where the biceps are coming from. Ah, love the lump in the throat that will never go away. Yes, it's never got to go away because you keep wanting it to go away. Want it there, Brian Hecker. I love the lump in my throat for real. Not I love it so it'll leave. I love it for real. Now you're a place for it. Are you guys with me? This is big. And when you cry these things out, you change your channel because you're no longer holding, it is Beachbody, you're no longer holding the old story. It's better than P90X. It's, it's Body Beast. Now, breathe in deep. Breathe into your stomach. Breathe into your legs. <clears throat> breathe into your whole body for a second. It is Saji, although he calls himself the Beast. And every time the guy behind him writes down stuff that's supposed to be how many reps he did, I picture he's just writing down everything that guy said so he can make his own version of Body Beast. Like, hey, it's body creased and it's, okay. Anyway, my, this is my point is that the, the biceps are growing. So take in a deep breath. <sighs> now, that's a start. I'm gonna tell you a couple of tangible things as far as money that are in this book, just a couple things here. And then I'm going to answer some of your questions. Here's one. This is one I've been talking about on a lot of things right now and I love it. Imagine how you've thought of money up until this call. What are your, what's your subconscious think about money? When you look at your bank account, what does your subconscious feel? <clears throat> okay, body beast, it's like Kathy, it's, it's like P90X but stronger. So what do you, by the way, fun is one of the biggest assets you have too. We get way too serious, right? But when you think about how you think of money, do you think you, oh, you're never enough? What are some thoughts? I'd love to for you guys for a second to think, what, how do you think of money? Or do you think I'm, you're never enough? That um, I'm scared, I feel freedom? Awesome, Body Beast is good, uh, right? Oops, okay, I want, what do you feel about money? It's never enough, I'm not safe, it's hard to get money, it's there, I'm poor, awesome. So, imagine, and maybe before we even start this, I wanna dare you to even write down a few things you think. And I'm talking what your subconscious thinks. When you see money, if someone handed you a big check, would you feel stressed? Would you feel, I hope I don't lose this? Would you feel very excited? Would you feel, okay, not enough, it's hard to get for me, all of it makes me sad, money equals freedom, never enough? Write down a few things on how you feel if you received a million dollars, when you look at your current bank account, write down those thoughts, what beliefs you might have stored that you learned from your parents. I wanna dare you before I go forward to write down three to five beliefs that you have, you're never enough, I, I can't make it, it's the root of all evil, rich people are evil, excellent, right? So go ahead and write those things down for a second and be really honest, we gotta be honest to really look at how we treat ourselves, how we treat money, how we treat life, because this isn't about money, this is about you. It goes too fast. I only have $400 and no job, I only have, so $400 is only have, your perception is only, do you guys hear that? I worry about money. Terror because my family was previously 
killed by communists for being wealthy. Well, so much love to you. Wow. So that's that's a deep-rooted trauma as far as money. And I'm sending so much love to you. I didn't catch your name, but so much love. One million dollars would give me more freedom. So I'm going to show you. Ginger says, how do we balance our relationship with money? So if you guys have three to five things written down that you believe about money. Now I want you to imagine, money scares me, right? I want you to imagine now that you're money and you're on a date with you. Imagine your money and you're on a date with you and you have this mentality. You're never enough. You're the root of all evil. You are terrorizing me. I need you for freedom. Imagine if you were on a date with someone that said these things. It's because of you that I can't get love. It's because of you that you're never enough. If you were on a date with someone and they said those things to you, would you want to stick around? Right? That's that mentality is actually you keeping money away, abundance away, receiving away, right? And if you think about your debt or really low amounts of money and say, it's never enough, okay? Well, that's like going on a date with someone and they're having an off day and you're like, you're never enough. If you were having a bad day and you went on a first date with someone and they said, you're never enough or you're the root of all evil, or I'm going to use you to get laid or to get someone to like me. Would you want to stay there? No. What would be the thing you would look for if you went on a date? You would want to know that you're loved as is. Can you feel that? You would want to know that their connection, maybe for me, I would love to know that their highest connection is to themselves. So I don't have their codependency or that I don't have them blocking me that they're a big open heart, that their connection is to themselves more than money. Can you see that? If your connection is to you, then money will come to you because you're safe. If your highest connection is to you, your love, your creativity. Imagine some people said money equals freedom, money equals security. Do you see that means you're not security? Just by saying money equals security, you are saying that you are not security. That you yourself is not security. And I know people that were totally broke and made millions of dollars and said money is security and they were more insecure when they had the money. The same part of them that wanted all the money to get security suddenly was worried that, well, my security is outside of me, so what if I lose it? So money can't equal security. You cannot make security outside of you. You cannot make security in your partner. You cannot make security. I guess if both of you were totally unconscious and you believed each other was, but you guys are all conscious, you're aware. You would not be on these calls. You would not be interested in this if you had no awareness. So you cannot make your partner security. You cannot make your partner freedom. You cannot make anything outside of you, the job, the, the place you live in, anything outside of you cannot be freedom, security. And if you do, life is going to do what it can to take it from you until you prove to yourself your security. So if money equals security, life will take it from you to prove to you that you're security. Do you get that? It has to because you will live a lie. You will be in a very shallow place. In fact, did you know some of the most depressed people are actually upper middle class people? So it's not proof. I mean, how many celebrities have we lost through drugs, suicide, or you have the Jim Carrey's that go totally spiritual because once they got the money and the abundance, they didn't feel secure or free, right? So money cannot equal security. Money cannot equal freedom. And if it does, life now in this 2019 time is going to do what it can to make sure you understand the truth of how nature works and take it from you. So you have to be security. And you have to start the practice of making you security. That's why for me, a couple hours of meditation a day is a great way to do it, right? So connecting to yourself, your soul, whatever. Now, can you look at your debt and say, thank you, I love you? Or do you go, shit, I'm stressed because I'm in debt? Because then you're against yourself. And how could you be creative, intuitive, let go of the things that no longer align with you, joyful, fun, funny, all of those amazing things if you're in resistance to what is? We have to start out loving our debt. We have to start out loving our low amounts of money. We have to start out loving 
the, the whatever we have. We have to start out by appreciating what we have and you have this moment and build an abundant belief system, build an abundant life by constantly being in the practice of what you have versus constantly chasing what you believe you don't have. And another thing, this thing that you look at your bank account and you go, this is how much money I have. The problem is you call this your bank account, but you're gonna lose this money one day and other people's money is going to go into this bank account. So this isn't your bank account. Everyone's bank account is your bank account. You just might not have done the creative thing to cause them to give you the response to the value that you're creating. The money in the bank account is not your bank account. You're just making yourself so small. Everything in the world is your bank account. Have you created a high enough alignment value for those things to happen? Oprah understood that the world's bank account was her bank account, right? That everything is yours. This idea of ownership is what shrinks us from wholehearted into shrinking, right? This is all in the book, by the way. Ownership, the illusion of ownership. Dan actually came up with a great analogy that's in the book about imagine going to the beach and bringing your own bag of sand versus enjoying all the sand at the beach. And you just keep packing the sand and going, this is mine, this is mine, and I don't wanna spend the sand. Yeah, but it's all here. And you can't see what you are on the other side of your giant backpack of stupid sand while you're at the beach. Raise your value, your alignment, you. Raise you, right? So you have to raise you. And when you raise you, trust me, you got the whole damn beach, right? You got the whole beach. There's a lot more there. But when you go, this is mine, that is so crazy. We, we have all the land to share, but really ownership just means you can't be here too. That's all that means, right? So yes, there's a park you could go to. It's totally free. You could go to it. It's yours. But if you're like, no one else can be here, that's ownership right? But other people can be there. So you all get to have the abundance of the park, right? This is really amazing. And if you really understand the vibration that you have to shrink yourself to, to have the false belief that your current bank account is your money. Think of how much it shrinks you. Think of how small that makes you feel. Yes, no one really owns anything. All the stuff you're trying to achieve, will it come with you when you die? Probably not. I hope, I hope the car doesn't come with me, right? So there is no mine. Play with that for a minute. Think about that for a minute. Ownership. How about love? How about we just create the highest alignment and things will want to come into your life because you're the safest alignment there is. The ultimate relationship does not have to be an ownership-based relationship. You don't have to say, you're mine and I'm yours. You better not do this. We made this deal six years ago. You could also just completely get into the highest alignment, be the best value, and they will choose you. You don't want people to stay with you out of fear. It's not sustainable. You get that. Money is the same way. If you're keeping money out of fear, I better hold on to this. I better not spend this on my dreams. I better not move into my heart. I better not spend this on what I actually am here to do. Fear is keeping the money. So money will go down, 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 down. Spend money on you. A money, B money, C money. A money, in the book also, I'm not gonna tell you too much because I want you to get it and get into the book. A money, no, I will tell you a lot actually. You still get the book though. A money is when you say, I, at A money, you go, I am going to take, let's say everyone, let's say everyone got a million dollars. A money is if you spent the money on a bunch of stuff that numbs you, that makes you excited in the moment, but you don't put it into anything else. A money is when you go, okay, I got a million dollars. I'm going to have a bunch of parties. I'm going to buy the most expensive car. I'm going to do what I can to get people to like me. That's how most of the public spends their money. B money is when you put money into accounts so that they rise themselves, right? So the kind of um, Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad, put your money into mutual funds. Money makes money. That's awesome. That's a big thing to do. It's great. Huge fan of it. Might not change who you are though. C money is when you put it into something that will change you. So let's say you had enough money and you do something that changes you. What I mean by that, you take that money and you take a year off and you meditate. That's going to change you. 
you get a personal trainer, a nutritionist, you get piano lessons. Everything in your life that's not a 10, you hire someone else to remove it. If the things in your life that you do that are professional that are not a 10, you hire someone else to do it. So that's C money, where you spend money and actually you transform, you change your value. Where even if they wiped out the dollar and there was no money left ever, C money is you are worth everything, even if the dollars, because you're worth more than money. So if the dollar's wiped out, you're still here. And I promise you at one point, a ton of people are gonna lose their money when the recession happens and all this other stuff. And if you have high value, you're gonna be one of the most valuable people in the world. They're gonna come to you because you are going to help them through the transformation into their value. Only people who've made their connection to themselves the highest value will be able to show other people that money isn't the highest value and that what they are after they lose the money is magical. So C money is when you change you, when you invest it. Now you might go, I have no money to invest in that. That's because you've been spending it all on A or B money. But C money is available when you start with C time. If you don't have, you don't have C money, do C time. Start doing the things that expand your soul. Start doing the things that take you to an expanded place. Start doing things that make you change, that cause you to grow meditate, painting, going for a walk in the woods, getting off the phone for longer periods of time, surrendering, being around people that raise your alignment, releasing, crying, writing your book, doing what you want. Now, sometimes see time could be, for some people, like let's say you've never had a job, having a job would be growth. The question is, does it take you closer to you? Sometimes people hear this and they think I'm saying everybody quit your job and I'm not. Sometimes 19 year olds that have never had a job, totally it would be their expansion to get a job, right? So the question is, what's your next step? What's your next highest thing to do? You get what I'm saying? And what keeps your old story alive? So what are A things in your life and what are C things in your life? So if you want, you can even take a minute and write down things that expand the shit out of you, that take you beyond you, that you kind of don't know what'll happen when you do it, right? I'm going to take cooking classes, Lisa says. Why is this valuable? It's awesome because she'll be cooking, but also because Lisa is about to learn more about who she is. More of who she is, more universe will come in. Would I'm gonna offer as many people here that want to come up with a C thing that you're gonna do this week. Cause we need to create change to create a massive, faster quickening of the vibrational shift that's going on in the world to help people out of their old stories. That is happening right now. So feel free to write down a few things you're gonna do now because of this call. I would love to hear that this call helped you and be inspired to make, sign up for a writing class, Off, awesome. I like to create. And there's some classes people sign up for that they think are C, but are A. Like sometimes we have addictions to going to certain classes that actually are stopping us from actually our expansion. So you have to ask your soul, does it expand me right now? Finishing my online program, making jewelry, sitting in quiet, collegoing with my friend Victoria, starting a yoga practice, spending uh, money on a C moment, art, gym, meditation, hiked alone for two hours, healthy lifestyle, uh, ceremonial cacao, Yes, develop a uh, guitar, buy my book. This is a total C-Money purchase, I'm proud to say. And you want to be a C-Money purchase for other people. You want to create C-Money options for other people. Like think of what we we go, oh, you, people say to me, Kyle, you're just doing this to make money. And it's so funny because first of all, most of the money from the movie goes to charity, but think about this too. We don't question Coke and Pepsi, which gives us cavities in our teeth. A money has a bunch of hidden other things. Do you guys know that? I'm gonna to totally read more of these in a second. A money has a bunch of hidden other problems. Like if you drink soda, you're gonna also have major dental work and, and possible other illnesses and things like that. Stress, lower vibrational thinking. That is the snake oil of the world, you guys. That's the cult right? It does no value for people, right? It just gets them sicker, right? So create things that are C-money opportunities for other people, because if it's a C-money opportunity for other people, it's a win, win, win. Win for, for the person that created it, win for the abundance that comes in, win because you're growing. Like our team has to do now everything that we wrote in this book. Our team is living this, 
This this call was inspired via, via meditations that we learn from the damn book, right? So we have to live this. So I grow, that's one. Two, the people that read it grow. Taking a singing lesson, says the amazing Sarah Haywood. Amazing person. Judy Keating says, do my energy work on me, right? So, so a win, win, win is when you get a win for you, which is uh, you grow because of what you do for a living. A second win is they grow right? Because they, they have a higher consciousness. They're better. They, they understand things more. You're moving them into a universal alignment. And the third is the world is better because of what you do. You know, not only do soda companies give everyone rotting teeth, but they're throwing plastic in the ocean. In fact, someone pointed out water companies don't make water. They make plastic. So a win, lose, lose is totally dangerous to your body because two thirds of the losing is in you, right? Giving me a hug, says Shauna. I will take it. Nancy Schwartz says, healing my cancer, and I just want to offer loving it. It's teaching you to love universally. I had someone at our, our meditation retreats. Come to that, too, if you get a chance. This woman came up. She was amazing. She said that she had cancer. She's trying to figure out how to fight it. And I said, what if it's here to teach you to love so unconditionally that you can love the parts of you that you believe are hurting you? And then you'll be able to even have a love for people that you think are hurting you that you can have a learn to love life. Life is trying to teach us to learn to love like we've never loved before. 2019 is about loving like you've never loved before. And it starts with you. It goes, start with your darkness. Start with your old story. Start with your pain. So you're here to learn to love meditation, giving 15% of my savings to a microloan program. Hell yes. Do you guys feel that? The meditation retreats to answer Kathy's question. We do them at Asilomar in Monterey. Please check out our website for that. I'm sure Lindsay can post a link here. Um, there it is. It comes up like that. We have that. We have our absolutely everything pass. I'll mention to you guys. If you haven't, we do these calls every Wednesday. Imagine these calls re-energizing you every Wednesday night. And all of my content is online. We have the entrepreneurial shift. We have all kinds of different stuff. Check out our extremely amazing, cheap, uh, absolutely everything pass. It's like Netflix for all our content. And then we do these calls. So please check it out. I promise you. These things are here. When you're in a win, 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 these things pay for themselves over and over and over again. A woman named Chantal, Chantel Rogers came to see me at Omega and she was feeling totally broke in debt, trying to figure out her life. She's been meditating eight hours a day for the last two weeks. And her, <laughs> she already lives in her dream house and sold her other house. Like, she suddenly has a major cash flow in the bank. She lives in her, her dream house, which is a small cabin on a lake, like the kind that you see, I've seen it, the kind that you see on, uh, you know, you see them on like the, the memes, right? She has that. So it's crazy. So she's meditated eight hours a day for two weeks and she's already got a major, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but a major influx of cash in the bank when she came to my event totally in debt. So meditating helped her release the old story. She's connecting to herself. She's feeling less codependent. That's all C time, right? So she's in the absolutely everything past community and she's telling her story. You got to see this. You got to see this. It is so much better than spending your money on beer. It is so much better than spending your time and energy on just going out and just aim, spending it aimlessly. We're just used to doing that. One dinner and you, this stuff is all available for your soul. So please join us, right? <sighs> yeah, she calls it her job. She says she does eight hours a day. She's, she, she says, I meditate full time. She's already creating a plan for massive income. Uh, the AEP isn't working for Joanne, Dan or uh, Lindsay, just making sure you saw that. So everyone take a deep breath in and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. I wanna thank you again for being with me. I'm totally uh, AEP page not found. Can we get that going? Oh, I know why, because you're all on it. <laughs> um, wine can be C time if it expands you. The question is, does it expand you? Yeah, we always go longer too. We say it's a one hour call. This Wednesday's call is Matt Kahn, by the way. If you hop on this week, this Wednesday night's call is Matt Kahn. That's the first week I'm gonna be off and Matt Kahn will be doing the Wednesday night call, answering your questions, giving you a talk, 
please join us on Wednesday night with Matt Kahn. So why don't I go to your questions? Renee, I'm going to go to your questions. So you see the ask a question section. There's a tiny chance that some of these people I might bring on, but if I bring them on, it goes a little longer. So what I'm gonna to try to do is answer some of these just kind of quicker Abraham Hicks style <laughs> than like have the person come on. Um, but we do that a lot on the AEP calls too. So Renee asks, I give too much. I volunteer my time for free. I already know the answer <laughs> before I read the rest of it. Your growth, your new 10, is often something you've never done. When we usually ask ourselves what our 10s are, it's often something that's within the bounds of what we've seen so far. Do you get what I mean by this? So if I ask myself what my 10 is, if I had an older consciousness, I might say, it's to go do comedy clubs, I'm really good at it. A 10 might be to some people to go get drunk, they think. But if you actually understand what a 10 is, a 10 is often something you've never done. And if I'm hearing Renee right, what she's weaker at for her expans expansion, Shauna nails it. Renee's new goal, new life, is to receive. Uh, absolutely everything passes $29 a month to answer the question that comes up. So your growth is receiving. Some people's growth is giving. I can think of a lot of people that I've seen in my life who have received so much and constantly take, 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 and they're scared to give. I remember I had a client that we do these morning calls. I do the six months of morning calls every single morning. If you're interested in that, write to write Kara at kylecs.com and just write 201 and she'll send you the info on that. But we had this guy, Stoss, who's an amazing guy who's been going from event to event, doing all this stuff, all this work. And he said, my parents are divorcing. How do I get them to stop divorcing? And I said to him, maybe your growth is to give to them. Maybe your growth is to say, if you guys want a divorce, I give you permission and, and want you to know I'm not going to hold on to that idea. And he started crying and he started releasing. So some people's growth is to release. I'm sorry, to give. And some people's growth is to receive, right? So Renee, one thing that might be your new thing is to learn how to receive. And a big word for you and a lot of people on here, I know for me too, is the word no. A lot of people got to where we are from saying yes so much. Some people get to where they are from saying no so much, right? So are we okay on here? It says I'm frozen. Hit refresh, awesome. So some people, if you've been saying yes, your growth, is to say no, right? So Renee, it's going to be exciting for you because it's not been in your in your you know in your in your vibration to say no. So you give, but you give from an empty vibration because you're tired. You give because you haven't received. And receiving and giving have to be even. Imagine if we were all just breathing out and no one was breathing in. You can only breathe out at the level you breathe in. Do you feel that? I can only bring out, uh, breathe out what air I have brought in. So if I'm not breathing in and I'm constantly breathing out, 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 I'm going to be exhausted. So I got to say no for a second to the people I'm breathing out and with no air and breathe in. My iPhone won't work if I don't charge it, right? So Renee, it might not have been in your DNA until today, but your growth is to learn how to say no and to receive. So you will start receiving by saying no. Just by saying no, you're going to be receiving, right? Just by saying no. Asking yourself, the people that I'm giving to, what I'm giving to, is it a 10 to give? Or am I doing it because I feel like I have to because I'm scared? Whatever. So we got to match your giving with the even amount of receiving because you're a master at giving. So it's time for you to give to you by saying no. And a great way to do it is by seeing your inner child next to you and saying, will my inner child over here want to go out with these people tonight, want to help these people? Because my inner child might be exhausted. And if you saw the child as separate from you, you'd do a great job at taking care of that child by saying no to other things. The child needs to rest. The child needs to meditate. The child needs more water. The child needs to go inward. Your growth is going to be there. So receive right now what I'm saying. 
And imagine the power of saying no, Renee. Imagine everything that doesn't excite you, take you beyond you, expand you at all. Imagine saying no to it. Even if you said yes to it for 20 years, imagine saying no to it today. I'll read the rest of your thing. I even help others with their own businesses for free. Yeah, you don't think you deserve money? There has to be reciprocation, right? There has to be reciprocation, right? So I even help their businesses for free. Well, you're helping them make money. You're helping them with your time. And by the way, their business can't thrive if they're not giving to you. Just so you know, that depletes not only in you, but it depletes in them. If you have people coming in and you're spending all that time helping them, but they aren't paying you for it, they vibrationally can't receive because they aren't giving. They won't be able to bring in because they're not giving. So your receiving is as good as how much you're giving and your giving's as much as good as how much you're receiving. So everyone take a deep breath and let's think of the word receive for a second. Feel the word receive. And when you breathe out, think of the word give. And I wanna offer you for a second as you breathe in, did one of those words scare you a little more than the other words? Breathe in again and take in the word receiving. And now breathe out the word give. And I want you to notice is receiving a scarier word because you're giving, no matter how much you're giving, is going to be better when you start receiving. You're gonna be better at it. So breathe in again, Renee, and everyone else. Breathe in the word receiving and receive that it's scary if it's scary. Breathe out, giving. Receive makes me feel like I'm going to cry. Yes, of course it would, especially for you, Mary Fast, because you have been such a giver. Mary Fast, someone I know, she's amazing. She's just the most loving angel and she's a hell of a giver. She gave to me so much. She's like one of the greatest people I've ever got to work with ever. Just so giving. She spent most of her flow group caring about me. She goes, Kyle, do you get any time for you? Do you get, it's just so loving, right? But I also know she could see that in me because she wants me to receive because often we want other people to have also what we want. I know she sincerely wanted me to have that, but also, we see what we need in other people. So let's all receive bigger. If you're on this call, odds are you're more on the giving side, right? So receive to balance that. Your job is to receive. And if you need to receive, your bigger word is no. If you need to give, your bigger word is yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Are you more of a no person or more of a yes person? Have you been protecting yourself and saying no, 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 no? So a yes would transform who you are, make you more of a whole? Or have you been someone who's saying yes to everything and you're a people pleaser? Yes, 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 I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you. And you get home and you're like, shit. You have to charge for your time. Receive it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. And your new growth for your expansion is to say no. Yes, you're going to say no. You're going to say no to the people. Even if they're a nine, can you do that, Renee? If they're a nine, can you say no? The difference between a 10 and a nine. A 10 is this will expand my soul. But if you're taking nines, there's no room for tens. A nine is, oh, this is exciting, but it won't expand my soul right? So I hope that helps. How do I break free of this pattern I set for myself? Renee, the answer to that question is how you break free of it is I want you to give yourself five no's a day. Five new no's. Like actually give yourself a sign. I'm going to say no to things that you habitually would have said yes to, but deep down don't want to do. Practice that. Five no's a day. Once you do that, it'll become 20, right? because then you'll have room for the things you wanna do. Most people, when you balance those two things, you're gonna have a magical life. Can you say yes to things that are a 10 and no to things that are a nine? Holy shit. The, most people are off balance and can do one or another, right? They say no to almost everything or they say yes to almost everything. What do you need more of? It's the one that would scare you. 
You're going to change if you do it. Five new no's. If you're more of a yes person, say five new no's a day to the things that are a nine or less. But I'll ask you, some of the things we do habitually, are they a 10? Is flipping through the internet 100 times a day a 10? Is, you know, is what, getting a latte a 10? Maybe it is, I don't know. Like, but sometimes it's not. Drinking water is more of a 10, you know? Like just being, meditating, letting go. For me, it is. We all have our own though. Andrea Heath, nice to meet you. Hi, Kyle. I hope my question is relatable to others here as well. That is so sweet. That is the empathetic, amazing feminine energy that you have that has a question for you and actually is hoping that it benefits everyone, right? Just out of curiosity, I'm just wondering if that sentence also, and I might be wrong, Andrea, shows a part of you scared to receive, right? Because I want to make sure this is good for everyone else, right? So I'm just checking on that, if that actually has any truth to that. So taking a deep breath, and I might be wrong, but often we're like, is it okay that I'm doing this, right? So, all right. Yes, 100%. Awesome. So thank you so much for making sure that your question is worthy of being asked. But it is. You know how I know? Because the universe wants it answered. And everything that's happening for you, the universe wants it. So I need to start off by telling you, Andrea Heath, that you're worthy of doing what you want to do, asking the questions that you want to ask. And even if you can't see tangibly that they will benefit other people on this call, you deserve to ask this question. And if at times that I'm going to answer it, I'm going to answer it because you deserve it. I hope everyone got that. You deserve, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve what you want in your life. And you don't have to apologize or make sure that you can see that everyone else will be okay with it. Because most of the things that you're going to really want in your life are going to be inspired ideas. So they're in a consciousness that's past the old story's consciousness. So often people will be threatened by it. Are you guys hearing that? Every idea you have that's inspired, every idea you have that's inspired, right? is a new consciousness. So often it will scare other people and other people will be threatened. So you got to know that the things that show up in your life that are for you to do, you're going to actually upset people. Not that we're going to do it to upset people, but just taking the idea that the ideas that are coming through are the universe healing itself. And to do that, it's got to create a world that's never existed. So that world that's never existed is going to threaten people who are only used to the world that has existed. You get what I'm saying? So when we do things that scare other people, that's okay if it's truly our highest calling. It'll also inspire other people. It'll trigger other people. It'll make them scared and then inspired. It triggers them because it's also permission, right? So let's go to your question, Andrea, but you're worthy of asking this and you're worthy of being the star of this call and you're worthy of being here. Thank you so much for making sure, but know that you have the right to receive. Just so you guys know, if it's freezing again, you hit refresh. You don't have to mention it each time because it always, always, always will will work when you refresh it. Sorry if it's doing that. I don't quite know. I promise you it's probably your internet because many people are having it not do that, but I'm not sure. So I still work for now at a nine to five job. However, I started my calling and started my own business a few months ago. Okay, so before I continue, I'm just curious I feel the energy of you have your foot in two different worlds, which means we're telling the internet, or the, inter the internet, chaos, right? However, I started my calling and started my own business a few months ago. I focus a lot of time on my side hustle when I'm not at my nine to five. So imagine I'm in fourth grade while still taking third grade classes. Did you get that? Really hear the energy there. I have a job that's my passion. I started following my calling and that's the side business. So I'm moving forward to fourth grade while keeping my nine to five job, which is third grade. How hard would it be to be a literal fourth grader in elementary school while also taking third grade and rehearing the shit you already know, right? Do you hear that? What would happen? If you stayed only in fourth grade where the higher level inspired ideas 
that you need to be receptive for could take it. Right now, I don't make any money doing it. Right. Of course you don't because you're back and forth, right? It's keeping the nine to, my offer is, and take what you want from this, but in keeping the nine to five job, right, you're actually making yourself unable to catch the reception of the things that you need for this fourth grade job, right? You're actually only able to catch third grade ideas while having a fourth grade job. My question is, how do I stay focused on my business and goals of giving back when there is no income from it, coming from it? So we got to look at ourselves. So the first thing we got to do is bring love. Is the job that you have that's your day job, Andrea Heath, also a 10 vibrationally? Does it make your soul happen? Or if I said, imagine letting go of it, do you feel this total relief? Do you feel permission, excitement, freedom, awesome, power, et cetera? What happens, Andrea Heath, when you, when you actually think of the idea of losing the nine to five? I know you'll freak out. It's a five. So you're averaging seven and a half, right? So there's no room for the high level ideas and it's 40 hours a week. And not only is it 40 hours a week, when you're not working about it, you're thinking, ugh, and you're thinking back about third grade. Imagine if we had to go to and stay in the same grade while we moved to the uh, next grade, it'd be impossible. Now I'm curious if you think about what your vibration would be if we let go of the five and what could come into our life that we can't see. So Andrea says, I failed so much already in my life. That is the mind coming up with your yeah, but which only exists because you hold on to the old grade. Your mind is bored because it's holding on to the old story. It's holding on to a five vibration. So it has time to sabotage you because you have your foot in fourth grade and third grade. But your soul is dying to go to fifth grade and sixth grade and seventh grade. You not only are losing fourth grade, you're losing the ascension of the fifth grade and the sixth grade and the seventh grade and the eighth grade and the ninth grade and the tenth grade because you're still holding on to the weight of third grade. Imagine everyone, if you were still dating the person you dated in high school, if you were still at the job that was your first job, imagine if you were still, and you weren't growing at it, imagine if you didn't expand and you might still have that job, but you had to evolve, you have to grow, right? So what could happen if your soul job suddenly was able to receive the vibration that matched the level of the job? Your calling took you beyond that grade. Your calling said, I'm worth this. But the moves you're making say, I'm worth this. So we got to look at what would happen if we let go of this and moved here. What would happen? So what shows up for me? Andrea, can we call you? There has to be a certain internet you have, so I don't know if it's going to work. But I'm going to do what I can to pull you up onto the screen and maybe even have you collega really quick to show you guys what I'm talking about. But Andrea's pain is she's actually making money more important than her soul by keeping a five job. Can you see that? Okay, Andrea says she's. I can call her. We'll see if she hops on the screen. I don't know if she's going to come on or not because it depends on if she has the right internet service or the right, there's like five factors. It works. Andrea Heath, Hi. so honored to be with you. Thank you. So Ladies nice and gentlemen. Oh, sorry, please say, what were you saying? I was saying it's so nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Andrea Heath. I can already feel you. I can feel your body, check this out, <laughs> has, has blown into fourth or fifth D consciousness and you're still acting from third D consciousness. Do you get what I mean by that? 100% yes. Yes. Your body is in a more expansive place and you don't trust that it actually will still take care of not only the money, but the fulfillment, the freedom, all the other things, the creative ideas. So what I actually can feel right now is a combination of total openness at the same time with an apology for your openness. And the truth is your ego is horrified of the infinite power of love that you are. That's so scary. It's so true. <laughs> right? Do you feel that? Yeah. No, absolutely. I I feel like I've spent so much of my life, like almost pleasing others or um, doing what appears to be right. Yeah. Like, the book. And what? it doesn't feel right. So now when I 
work on this side hustle, it's like, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. This yeah. is what's going to help me and help others and change the world. Yet at the same time, I'm still hanging on to that. What yeah. would my parents say? What if I fail again? So it's your parents. That's a huge deal. So your parents' consciousness is talking through you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Your parents. So there's you, what your soul is, and then there's what your parents are right now what's so interesting is what you're doing right now is probably the worst thing you could do because you have two worlds like you could either own the nine to five job fall in love with it do what you can to make it a 10 and then let it expand to match you or you could let go of it and go over here whatever you do is fine even if you keep both but how much would i not be able to do this if i stayed a stand-up comedian if i stayed in my old yeah you you're Sarah Hayward, Haywood points out your it's a side your soul is a side hustle, and the main priority is the guarantee, the the parents thing. Now, what's funny, is, work, right? <laughs> what's even funnier is if you quit your job, we forget that you also could still get another job later if it doesn't work. So true. Like we act like every decision we make is like the end of my life, but the truth is, you could let go of it see what happens you will cry for a week because you'll not only let go of the job have you seen my movie by the way the new movie oh yeah of course i saw it like within an hour after <laughs> awesome thank you so much well you'll not only say goodbye to the part of you that kept that job you'll not only say goodbye to the job but you'll say goodbye to your parents consciousness sarah haywood who's a magical being who i know very well and love so much says she will help you find another job if you need <laughs> So what's going on is Sarah Haywood, who's extremely conscious and aware, is feeling your vibration in my eyes because you're very valuable. You're, you are, I can, it's weird because what I'm feeling in my body is expansion in my body and a thing in the pit of my stomach that represents the kid that's scared. It's like having like the fastest animal in the world, but it's chained to a pole, you know what I mean? Like it's like, I wanna cut the damn chain because your value when your vibration is hit is going to be so big. If I, I know it, I know it. Like I, there, I don't have a doubt. Like I just know, but it's like, it's cutting that chain. Yeah. It's the actual process of actually doing it. Do you know Calego? Of course. If you guys don't know what Calego is, that's where we ad lib our future as if it already happened. So I'm gonna have you Calego real quick for me. What happened, and I'm not, now I want you to know, we can go back to keeping the job tomorrow, but we're gonna make believe that right after this call, you put in your two weeks notice at the job. This is just for the Calego, right? So you can go back, you can take it back later, but for right now, would you give me a Calego and pretend that this call we're doing right now was one year ago? And I remember a year ago, you were on with me before I had my New York Times bestselling book and my biceps were only to hear before they got better. Do you remember what happened with you? Would you tell us about it? I remember, Kyle, yeah. So um, one year ago, after that awesome call that we had on the 1st of September, um, I quit my job the Tuesday after the long weekend and everything changed within a few months. I was actually making an income on my side hustle. And it didn't matter that people didn't believe in me because they saw the proof and they believe now. And I have meditated more, um, more than two hours every day. And that has made a huge difference. I was on Jay Shetty's podcast uh, the other day and spreading love and positivity. And now I work with Kyle. I help him out at his events. And um, um, in the middle of writing my book, which I know is going to be a huge hit, it's all about positivity and finding the silver lining. And it's going to be huge. And it's been a great year. I remember too, once you leapt up to fourth grade or fifth grade or whatever we want to call it, everything in your life that was third grade went from being this thing you're scared to letting go of to totally easy to let go of. Like once you moved up to fifth grade dimension, all the stuff in your house that was a, an eight or a seven suddenly felt obvious to let go of. So you, so you totally sold, you know, a ton of stuff that was left over. You, you, your alignment with types of friends happened. 
that changed. Like I remember things changed. Like there were higher level people that you were working with that were vibrationally the match to you as a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grader, right? And you were in the absolutely everything past community. So everything, everyone on here was connecting with you. I remember in order to make this leap secure, you replaced the nine to five job with doing this thing that you, the, the new calling that we're about to find out what it is, <laughs> doing the calling a little bit more about it doing meditation and and doing two hours of Calego every day with someone from the call like you you constantly were skype Calegoing with different people do you guys remember that did anyone partner with her do you guys remember that happening i remember that happening andrea wasn't that amazing I remember that that was a huge change it was awesome yeah yeah so uh so will you tell us real quick about and then maybe give us another uh, even more another minute of Calego because i feel that that sure. hits about to come out but Tell me about um, what your what the the calling is. So it's basically just social media. So it's the pretty positive is the name of the business, and I make little motivational videos, just inspirational videos. Um, YouTube today's video was about smiling, so it was about how to smile more, the benefits of smiling. Um, I suggested some books, and it was maybe five minutes long. So, just spreading messages of love and positivity through social media, which mm. everybody uses now. So, I think it's the best avenue to really get it out there. Awesome. So, what was a way that you received? Was it through blogs? Was it through books? Was it through advertising on that? Was it because it's awesome you're going to do this and I want to create some type of receiving for you if you're going to do this, right? So, what's a way that people could give you abundance for what you were offering? Yeah, and I think that's my biggest challenge um, in coming to this because I don't want to ask for anything. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I know that that's part of just who I am and who I've always been. So it's who you've always been. It's not who you are. Right. You know so, what I'm saying? Before. That's not yeah. me. Right. A person who believes who they are is their parents' lagging mentality is totally going to believe that's who they are. But you haven't seen what you are without holding on to how you should do things according to your parents. We don't know who you are. You might not only not have to, it's not even about you asking for something. It might just be, yeah, I, I'm valuable and I'm just going to say no a lot more to everything that, that doesn't call my soul. And right? I know that I'll keep doing it for free because that's what I'm doing it for now. And I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I mm -hmm. spent like the entire long weekend doing it, you know, setting up my little, my video and editing and, and I loved it and I wasn't getting paid a dime for it. So I know that I'll keep on doing it. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe through ads. Uh, eventually, I want to write a book. Like I said, once I'm on Jay Shetty's podcast and I'm working with you, it's just going to be great. Hell yeah. So, okay. So taking a deep breath and receive it. Now, there's a part of you that has existed that isn't what you are, but you think is what you are sometimes that's scared, right? Can you feel that in you? Yeah. Okay. And what does that, ch that inner child need right now? What is it saying that it needs? Just to be seen for what's in my heart and not for what I can tangibly present to the family. Mm. What if we don't present to the family anymore? <laughs> what if we present to people that are receiving for you, that, that are a match to what you offer? That's better. Right? I mean, it's kind of like, I, I love Brian Wilson, he's the high voice and main writer for the Beach Boys. Absolutely. And I'm trying to picture him trying to get tone deaf people to hear or understand him, right? And you're, you're literally trying to get people from a, a different consciousness to understand following your dream. If he was presenting God only knows or good vibrations to someone who was totally tone deaf and, and just liked very weak, basic music, then he would think he's wrong. He would think that what he has isn't a gift for the world. You have to have someone with a capacity that can see you, see you. So your parents can't. But I have to keep on um, talking to them and being around them. You can talk to them, but that part of you that is insisting that they understand you, I just want to help it leave. <laughs> I want to help it not need to be seen. Yeah, you can talk to them, but realize you're on a higher consciousness than they are. So you're their parents now. You know that? 
And a huge shift for me is those, that inner child in me that wants my mom or my dad to understand what I do. And my parents grew up in the 50s. Like, it's like an iPhone 9 trying to get a rotary phone to understand it. Technology-wise, that's exactly the same times. They want you to be happy, yeah, but they have the way that they think you should do it. And so when you're trying to convince them, that part of you that wants to be seen, you're going to, one of the things that are coming from your leaping out of third grade to fifth grade is you seeing you and you not needing them to see you. And you're, you're telling the universe what's true by you getting in that alignment. You're gonna learn about your powers. Let me ask you this, financially, if this didn't work for six months, which would, I'm sure not saying, are you covered for a while? Do you have anything for? Not really. I mean, I, I actually live with my parents. Me and my kids moved back in with my parents um, after my divorce. So we live in the same house as them. So, I mean, worst case scenario, I do pay rent here, but I mean, they're not going to kick me out onto the street or anything like that. So, I mean, yeah, I would say that I'm, I would be okay. A hundred percent. We would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So awesome. So you're actually, so what you're saying is, so, so we have a couple things. One, we want to create a place where your vibration is with yourself. A lot of times that's very hard. So even though you live with them, I want to offer you to give yourself some space, Calego moments, different things like that, where you do this. Because one thing that we do is we want to be seen by the people we're around the most. We want to be seen by the people we live this. In fact, with in fact, it can be very common to walk into a house, have someone that lives with you, you immediately feel unseen, repressed, and stressed. And in that pain, you fight to be seen. We're going to start meditating a lot more. We're going to start Calegoing a lot more. You're going to start creating a lot more. Because I, it's very, it, having the parents around, you can totally do it. But I'm trying to get you to a place where you separate from that a little bit. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And create your own independence and your own growth. So you have a ton of people that have written, I totally want to, you know, Kaleko with you. That would be awesome. Right? Yeah. So that's the first thing. So the second thing is, I'm just curious after this, what do you think? Are you keeping the job? It's fine no matter what you say. It's interesting because... So I work in healthcare and I got a really great promotion like a few months ago. And just the other day before the VP went on holidays, she said to me, you know, you've really exceeded our expectations here. We're so proud of you of taking over this department and just, you know, all ego stuff. And, um, and then I left feeling like, well, crap, now I can't disappoint them and my parents. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I it was a day of feeling really torn. But like I said, I spent this whole weekend creating. And I just, I kept thinking, imagine I could do this all the time. Imagine I was doing this all the time. Um, for sure, I would create change. For sure, I would create income. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, yeah, the job's got to go. And I don't mean this in a guilt way but we're worried about disappointing our parents and the lady at the at where you work. How many people are we disappointing by not being in our calling? Thank that you. For just, that we just can't see. How much does my daughter need a hero? How much does my, you know, the people around us need permission to leap to a higher consciousness? How many people that we just can't see, they still exist, right? How many people are there? I, I mean, I was about to disappoint millions of comedy fans and all my comedy friends when I left. And these calls would not have formed. This talk right now wouldn't have formed. The pretty positive would not be a thing if What's you that? hadn't done that. The pretty positive wouldn't have been a thing if you didn't do that. So remember that, thank you, and, and you did it, and remember that when we let go of something, the biggest thing I learned ever, and you have to honor this as true, when you let go of something, the only reason you stress is your mind can measure what you will lose. It can't see what you will gain. Had I stayed in comedy, Vivi wouldn't exist. Had I, had I stayed in comedy, I don't know what I'd be doing. I could see the guarantee of comedy. It was paying great. I was heading towards a huge movie career and maybe I'd be doing it, but I'd be depressed because I have a consciousness that knew this wasn't the highest truth. Right. Thing, what's that? 
I consider myself a, a really happy person. I mean, obviously it's called pretty positive. So I, I'm always trying to find those, you know, those silver linings, those happy moments. And when you say that, like I would have been depressed if I stayed in there, I just, I've always been a happy person, but I feel like there could be a side if I just, like I'm 39, so I'm young, but in 10 years from now, will I say, oh my gosh, I'm going to be 50 next year and I didn't follow this calling. And that to me, that would make me so sad. So the universe does not respond to what we say. It responds to what we do. And I want you to know that the leaps that you take will rise the collective conscious like water level higher. You are another person that will give the world permission to be in their highest calling. And I guarantee you half the videos I'm sure you're going to be putting out are about following your highest calling. I mean, we're all coaching ourselves, right? So if you feel that excitement and that release and realize that you're capable of still getting a job if you need to, but let's see what happens if you acclimate for three months, you might actually find the health company calls you and tries to give you a raise, but you're going to be so in alignment. You get what I'm saying? Like, you don't know, right? So when you follow your highest calling, magic shows up. And the things that you were scared to let go of often chase you for 10 times more. Everything starts to want different things. You're on a higher vibration and you'll be more receptive. And you're saying me, I can reflect to you when you're in a place of that vibration. And I'm not saying like, I'll give you a job, but I'm saying like, I can tell you, we can only hire people that we feel are in full alignment with their number, with their truth, right? So when we feel someone that has that, I'm not worthy and I'm sorry, because they're holding on to the old thing, then we understand that it'll be apologetic the whole time they're working with us. And everyone that's joined our team had some crazy leap. Lindsay on our team, literally, I didn't even, I barely knew her. And I called her at random and said, you must have done something today because I feel like calling you and offering you a job. And she said, this morning I quit my job. I have no money. I have no idea what I'm doing. But because she leapt first, it created a vortex for me to call her. I didn't even know her, right? So really quick, Lindsay, are we okay? I know that the thing was going to cut off at two hours. So there's a chance this is going to go. <laughs> but so I'll give you a final thought on that. And then I think we have to bounce because it, it cuts us off at two hours. So. Thank you. Yeah. Any thoughts, any moves you're making? I wish we had more time. It's, it's funny because it seems backwards when you say you have to leap for the, like it seems like the backwards way to do it. But um, I, I just, I imagine the creative things that I come up with now in the, that crunch time where I'm like, oh, I have to do this. I have to get another video and I have to, yeah. it was just, just the ability to create. So really quick, just because I have 40 seconds before this cuts off. Can, can we talk about this on a, a future Absolutely Everything Pass call on Wednesday? Of course, I'm there every Wednesday. Awesome. Please write us again too and I'll connect with you and we'll do more after. This is here to inspire everyone. And also you guys, please pick up the new book. It's amazing. I'm sorry to I'm sorry to cut you off. I totally yeah. want more, but it's going to cut me off. Pick up the new book, check out the movie, and then know that it's been an honor, 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 honor to be with all of you tonight. So I'm just going to say thank you to Audrey, Jenny, Loft, Sam, Celeste. I hope you guys feel inspired, excited. Please pick up the book. Huge hand to Andrea Heath for coming on the call. I'm so sorry to cut her off, but. We totally have to go because this is going to cut me off any second, probably right now. I thought it'd be cool if it did it, but it didn't. I love you guys all so much. Thank you for being in my life. Join us Wednesday night with Matt Kahn. Please come see me in Seattle or uh, on Tuesday night in Seattle at First Baptist Church with East West Bookshop. Please pick up my book. Pick up like 10 of them for other people, please. If you all got a thousand, we'd sell a million. So if you guys all buy a thousand, I'm going to dare you to do that. It'd be awesome. Thank you for being with me. I hope you got something out of tonight. Meditate, make this call worth so much.